electric flux is written symbolically as such. So electric flux takes into account the amount of electric field passing through a surface. So if I have a surface, this is like a plane, like a sheet of paper, with an electric field passing through it, I can calculate the flux of that electric field. Um, in this example, I have a uniform electric field, which I'll call E, and the surface has an area which I'll call A. The electric flux is then the amount of electric field passing through a surface. How exactly do we calculate electric flux? Well, first off, we can use the dot product. Then the electric field is equal to, or excuse me, the electric flux is equal to the electric field dotted with the area vector, which I'll explain a little bit more in just a second. So first, why does it take this form? Well, we're interested in the amount of electric field passing through a surface. So if the electric field happens to be perpendicular to the surface, so an example with a plane there, say I have a circle, a sphere, and the electric field is going through the sphere. So in both of these cases, the electric field is perpendicular, that's the symbol for perpendicular, to this area vector. So basically, if we take a look at a surface, the area vector is normal to the surface. So in the cases that the electric field is, is perpendicular to the surface, then we can write flux as just the magnitude of the electric field times the area. Again, this is only when it's perpendicular to the surface. If we have a surface that is not perpendicular to the electric field, like the one that I drew previously, which I will attempt to do again. So here are the lines of my electric field. And if I take a look at my area vector, it might look something like this. So that means that there is an angle here between my electric field vector and my area vector. So if we want to calculate the electric flux now, we're only interested in the part of the electric field that is perpendicular to the surface. So I'll have the magnitude of the electric field times the area of the surface times the cosine of the angle. And again, that's because I'm only interested in the amount of electric field that happens to be perpendicular to the surface. So this is, it's written in scalar form. If I write this in vector form, we come back to the dot product that I wrote previously. So a little bit about why we use the dot product for this. So now a simple example using the diagram I have above. Let's put some numbers to the diagram we have above. So imagine this electric field magnitude is 100 newtons per coulomb. The length of this surface is 40 centimeters. 
the width of this surface is 30 centimeters. So since we're dealing with a rectangular sheet, the area is going to be length times width. If I plug my numbers in, I'll get 1200 centimeters squared. I'm going to want to convert this to meters. Since it's centimeters squared, I need to do my conversion factor twice. So that's one meter time is equal to 100 centimeters, so one meter over 100 centimeters squared, because I have centimeters squared there. So now my centimeters squared cancel, and I'll be left with meters squared. So that is 0 0.12 meters squared. Don't forget to actually square the 100 that's in the denominator inside that parentheses. It's an easy mistake to make. So now that we have our electric field and our area, we can go ahead and calculate the electric flux through the surface that I drew above. So my electric field, again, is 100 newtons per coulomb times my area, 0.12 meters squared. Put that into our calculators, and we find 12 newton meters squared per coulomb. So that means that the units of flux, the unit for electric flux, is newton meter squared per coulomb.